The English Electric Lightning is a fighter aircraft that served as an interceptor during the 1960s and 1970s. It remains the only UK-designed and built fighter capable of Mach 2. The Lightning was designed, developed, and manufactured by English Electric, which was subsequently absorbed by the newly formed British Aircraft Corporation. Later the type was marketed as the BAC Lightning. It was operated by the Royal Air Force RAF, the Kuwait Air Force KAF, and the Royal Saudi Air Force RSAF. A unique feature of the Lightning's design is the vertical, staggered configuration of its two Rolls-Royce Avon turbojet engines within the fuselage. The Lightning was initially designed and developed as an interceptor to defend the V-bomber airfields from attack by anticipated future nuclear-armed supersonic Soviet bombers such as what emerged as the Tupolev Tu-22, but it was subsequently also required to intercept other bomber aircraft such as the Tupolev Tu-16 and the Tupolev Tu-95. The Lightning has exceptional rate of climb, ceiling, and speed. Pilots have described flying it as being saddled to a skyrocket. This performance and the initially limited fuel supply made the Lightning a fuel-critical aircraft, meaning that its missions are dictated to a high degree by its limited range. Later developments provided greater range and speed along with aerial reconnaissance and ground attack capability. Following retirement by the RAF in the late 1980s, many of the remaining aircraft became museum exhibits. Until 2009, three Lightnings were kept flying at Thunder City in Cape Town, South Africa. In September 2008, the Institution of Mechanical Engineers conferred on the Lightning its Engineering Heritage Award at a ceremony at Bay Systems site at Wharton Aerodrome. Topic Development Topic Origins The specification for the aircraft followed the cancellation of the Air Ministry's 1942 E-2443 supersonic research aircraft specification, which had resulted in the Miles M.52 program. WEW. Teddy. Petter, formerly chief designer at Westland Aircraft, was a keen early proponent of Britain's need to develop a supersonic fighter aircraft. In 1947, Petter approached the Ministry of Supply with his proposal, and in response specification ER.103 was issued for a single research aircraft, which was to be capable of flight at Mach 1.5 km per hour and 50,000 feet .Petter initiated a design proposal with F.W. Freddy. Page leading the design and Ray Creasy responsible for the aerodynamics. By July 1948 their proposal incorporated the stacked engine configuration and a high-mounted tailplane but was designed for Mach 1.5. As a consequence it had a conventional 40 degrees swept wing this proposal was submitted in the November and in January 1949 the project was designated P.1 by English Electric. On 29 March 1949 Mohs granted approval for English Electric to start the detailed design, develop wind tunnel models and build a full-size mock-up. The design that had developed during 1948, evolved further during 1949. To achieve Mach 2 the wing sweep was increased to 60 degrees with the ailerons moved to the wingtips. In late 1949 low-speed wind tunnel tests showed that a vortex was generated by the wing which caused a large downwash on the tailplane, this issue was solved by lowering its height below the wing. Following the resignation of Petter, Page took over as design team leader for the P.1. In 1949, the Ministry of Supply had issued specification F2349, which expanded upon the scope of ER 103 to include fighter level maneuvering. 
On 1 April 1950, English Electric received a contract for two flying airframes, as well as one static airframe, designated P.1. The Royal Aircraft Establishment was skeptical of Petter's swept wing concepts. To test the design of both the wing, the tailplane and to assess handling, Short Brothers were issued a contract to produce the Short SB-5 in mid-1950. This was a low-speed research aircraft and was designed so that different wing sweep angles could be assumed by the single aircraft. An assortment of tailplanes and wings were supplied and could be installed in order for their flight performance to be evaluated. However, following the first flight of the SB.5 on 2 December 1952, the trials demonstrated the choice of a tailplane and a 60-degree wingsweep and proved the design principles to be effective. From 1953 onwards, the first three prototype aircraft were hand-built at Samlesbury. These aircraft had been assigned the aircraft serials WG-760, WG-763, and WG-765 the static airframe. The prototypes were powered by unreheated Armstrong Siddeley Sapphire turbojets, as the selected Rolls-Royce Avon engines which would power subsequent production aircraft had fallen behind schedule due to their own development problems. Due to the limited internal space of the fuselage the fuel capacity was relatively small, giving the prototypes an extremely limited endurance, and the narrow tires housed in the thin wings would rapidly wear out. Outwardly, the prototypes looked very much like the production series, but they were distinguished by the rounded triangular intakes, short fins and lack of operational equipment. On 9 June 1952, it had been decided that there would be a second phase of prototypes built to develop the aircraft towards achieving Mach 2.0 2450 km per hour. These were designated P-1B while the initial three prototypes were retroactively reclassified as P.1A P-1B was a significant improvement on P-1A. While it was similar in aerodynamics, structure and control systems, it incorporated extensive alterations to the forward fuselage, reheated Rolls-Royce Avon R24R engines, a conical center body inlet cone, variable nozzle reheat and provision for weapons systems integrated with the ADC and AI.23 radar. Three P-1B prototypes were built, assigned serials XA-847, XA-853 and XA-856 in May 1954, WG-760 and its support equipment were moved to RAF Boscombe Down for pre-flight ground taxi trials. On the morning of 4 August 1954, WG-760, piloted by Roland Beaumont, flew for the first time from Boscombe Down. Down. One week later, WG-760 officially achieved supersonic flight for the first time, having exceeded the speed of sound during its third flight. During its first flight, WG-760 had unknowingly exceeded Mach 1 but due to position error the Mach meter only showed a maximum of Mach 0.95 1 The occurrence was noticed during flight data analysis a few days later. While WG-760 had proven the P.1 design to be viable, it was limited to Mach 1.51 1 due to directional stability limits. In May 1956, the P.1 received the «lightning» name, which was said to have been partially selected to reflect the aircraft's supersonic capabilities. On 4 April 1957 Beaumont made the first flight of the P-1B exceeding Mach 1 during this flight. On 25 November he reached Mach 2, the first time in a British aircraft. During the early flight trials of the P-1B speeds in excess of 1,000 miles per hour were achieved daily. During this period the ferry FD-2 Delta held the world speed record 1,132 miles per hour achieved on 10 March 1956 and held till December 1957. 
While the P-1B was potentially faster than the FD-2, it lacked the fuel capacity to provide one run in each direction at maximum speed to claim the record in accordance with international rules. In 1958, two test pilots from the USAF Air Force Flight Test Center, Andy Anderson and Dickie Slayton, were given the opportunity to familiarize themselves with the P-1B. Slayton, who was subsequently selected as one of the Mercury astronauts, commented, The P.1 was a terrific plane, with the easy handling of the F-86 and the performance of an F-104. Its only drawback was that it had no range at all. Looking back, however, I'd have to say that the P.1 was my favorite all-time plane. Production The first operational Lightning, designated Lightning F.1, was designed as an interceptor to defend the V-Force airfields in conjunction with the V-Force airfield's own last-ditch Bristol Bloodhound missile defenses from enemy nuclear-armed bomber attack long enough for the also nuclear-armed V-Force bombers to take off and get clear of their airfields which, along with the dispersal airfields, would be the highest priority targets in the UK for enemy nuclear weapons. To best perform this intercept mission, emphasis was placed on rate of climb, acceleration, and speed, rather than range. Originally, a radius of operation of 150 miles (240 kilometers) from the V bomber airfields was specified, and combat endurance. It was equipped with two 30 mm Aden cannon in front of the cockpit windscreen and an interchangeable fuselage weapons pack containing either an additional two Aden cannon, 48 2-inch mm unguided air-to-air -air rockets, or two de Havilland Firestreak air-to-air -air missiles, a heavy loadout optimized for damaging large aircraft. The Ferranti AI.23 onboard radar provided missile guidance and ranging, as well as search and track functions. The next two Lightning variants, the Lightning F1A and F.2, were steady but relatively minor refinements of the design. The next variant, the Lightning F.3, was a major departure. The F.3 had higher thrust Rolls-Royce Avon 301R engines, a larger squared-off fin and strengthened inlet cone allowing a service clearance to Mach 2.0 2450 km per hour. The F.1, F1A and F.2 were limited to Mach 1.7 2083 km per hour. The AI-23B radar and red top missile offered a forward hemisphere attack capability and deletion of the nose cannon. The new engines and fin made the F.3 the highest performance lightning yet, but with an even higher fuel consumption and resulting shorter range. The next variant, the Lightning F.6, was already in development, but there was a need for an interim solution to partially address the F3's shortcomings, the F3A. The F3A introduced two improvements, a new, non-jettisonable, 610 Imperial Gallon 2800L ventral fuel tank, and a new, kinked, conically cambered wing leading edge, incorporating a slightly larger leading edge fuel tank, raising the total usable internal fuel to 716 Imperial Gallons 3260L. The conically cambered wing improved maneuverability, especially at higher altitudes, and the ventral tank nearly doubled available fuel. The increased fuel was welcome, but the lack of cannon armament was felt to be a deficiency. It was thought that cannons were desirable to fire warning shots in the intercept mission. The Lightning F.6 was the ultimate Lightning version to see British service. Originally it was nearly identical to the F-3A with the exception that it could carry two 260 Imperial Gallon 1, L ferry tanks on pylons over the wings. These tanks were jettisonable in an emergency, and gave the F.6 a substantially improved deployment capability. There remained one glaring shortcoming, the lack of cannon. This was finally rectified in the form of a modified ventral tank with two Aden cannons mounted in the front. 
The addition of the cannons and their ammunition decreased the tank's fuel capacity from 610 to 535 imperial gallons 2770 to 2430 L, but the cannon made the F.6 a real fighter. Again, the final British Lightning was the Lightning F2A. This was an F.2 upgraded with the cambered wing, the squared fin, and the 610 Imperial gallons 2800 L ventral tank. The F-2A retained the AI-23 and Firestreak missile, the nose cannon, and the earlier Avon 211R engines. Although the F 2A lacked the thrust of the later Lightnings, it had the longest tactical range of all Lightning variants, and was used for low-altitude interception over West Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Export and further developments The Lightning F.53, otherwise known as the Export Lightning, developed as a private venture by BAC. While the Lightning had originated as an interception aircraft, this version was to have a multirole capability for quickly interchanging between interception, reconnaissance, and ground attack duties. The F.53 was based on the F.6 airframe and avionics, including the large ventral fuel tank, cambered wing and overwing pylons for drop tanks of the F.6, but incorporated an additional pair of hardpoints under the outer wing. These hardpoints could be fitted with pylons for air-to-ground weaponry, including two 1,000 pounds (450 kilograms) bombs or four SNEB rocket pods, each carrying 1868 mm rockets. A gun pack carrying two Aden cannons and 120 rounds each could replace the forward part of the ventral fuel tank. Alternative, interchangeable packs in the forward fuselage carried two Firestreak missiles, two Red Top missiles, twin retractable launchers for 44 times 2 inch 50 mm rockets, or a reconnaissance pod fitted with five 70 mm Type 360 Vinton cameras. BAC also proposed clearing the overwing hardpoints for carriage of weapons as well as drop tanks, with additional Matra JL 100 combined rocket and fuel pods each containing 18 SNEB 68 mm 2.7 in rockets and 50 imperial gallons 227L of fuel or 1000 pounds 450 kilograms bombs being possible options this could give a maximum ground attack weapons load for a developed export lightning of 6 1000 pounds 450 kilograms bombs or 44 times 2 in 51 mm rockets and 144 times 68 mm rockets. The Lightning T.55 was the export two-seat variant. Unlike the RAF two-seaters, the T.55 was equipped for combat duties. The T.55 had a very similar fuselage to the T.5, while also using the wing and large ventral tank of the F.6. The export Lightning had all of the capability of the RAF's own Lightnings such as exceptional climb rate and agile maneuvering. The export Lightning also retained the difficulty of maintenance, and serviceability rates suffered. The F.53 was generally well regarded by its pilots, and its adaptation to multiple roles showed the skill of its designers. In 1963, BAC Wharton was working on the preliminary design of a two seat Lightning development with a variable geometry wing, based on the Lightning T.5. In addition to the variable sweep wing, which was to sweep back between 25 degrees and 60 degrees, the proposed design featured an extended ventral pack for greater fuel capacity, an enlarged dorsal fin fairing, an arrestor hook, and a revised inward retracting undercarriage. The aircraft was designed to be compatible with the Royal Navy's existing aircraft carrier's carrier based aircraft. The VG Lightning concept was revised into a land based interceptor intended for the RAF the following year. Various alternative engines to the Avon were suggested, such as the newer Rolls Royce Spey engine. It is likely that the VG Lightning would have adopted a solid nose by moving the air inlet to the sides or to upper fuselage to install a larger, more capable radar. Topic: 
Topic Design Topic Overview The Lightning had several distinctive design features, the primary being the twin engine arrangement, notched delta wing, and low mounted tailplane. The vertically stacked and longitudinally staggered engines were the solution devised by Petter to meet the conflicting requirements of minimizing frontal area, providing undisturbed engine airflow across a wide speed range, and packaging two engines to provide sufficient thrust to meet performance goals. The unusual over-under configuration allowed for the thrust of two engines, with the drag equivalent to only 1.5 engines mounted side by side, a reduction in drag of 25% over more conventional twin-engine installations. The engines were fed by a single nose inlet with inlet cone, with the flow split vertically aft of the cockpit, and the nozzles tightly stacked, effectively tucking one engine behind the cockpit. The result was a low frontal area, an efficient inlet, an excellent single engine handling with no problems of asymmetrical thrust. Because the engines were close together, an uncontained failure of one engine was likely to damage the other. If desired, an engine could be shut down in flight and the remaining engine run at a more efficient power setting which increased range or endurance, although this was rarely done operationally because there would be no hydraulic power if the remaining engine failed. Production aircraft were powered by various models of the Rolls-Royce Avon engine. This power plant was initially rated as capable of generating 11,250 lbf of dry thrust, but when employing the four-stage afterburner this increased to a maximum thrust of 14,430 lbf Later models of the Avon would feature, in addition to increased thrust, a full variable reheat arrangement. A special heat reflecting paint containing gold was used to protect the aircraft's structure from the hot engine casing which could reach temperatures of 600 degrees Celsius. Under optimum conditions, a well-equipped maintenance facility would take four hours to perform an engine change so specialized ground test rigs were developed to speed up maintenance and remove the need to perform a full ground run of the engine after some maintenance tasks. The stacked engine configuration complicated maintenance work, and the leakage of fluid from the upper engine was a recurring fire hazard. The fire risk was reduced, but not eliminated, following remedial work during development. For removal the lower number one engine was removed from below the aircraft, after removal of the ventral tank and lower fuselage access panels, by lowering the engine down, while the upper number two engine was lifted out from above via removable sections in the fuselage top. The fuselage was tightly packed, leaving no room for fuel tankage or main landing gear. While the notched delta wing lacked the volume of a standard delta wing, each wing contained a fairly conventional three-section main fuel tank and leading edge tank, holding 312 imp gal 1420 L. The wing flaps also each contained a 33 imp gal 150 L fuel tank and an additional 5 imp gal 23 L was contained in a fuel recuperator, bringing the aircraft's total internal fuel capacity to 700 imp Gal 3, L. The main landing gear was sandwiched outboard of the main tanks and aft of the leading edge tanks, with the flap fuel tanks behind. The long main gear legs retracted towards the wingtip, necessitating an exceptionally thin main tire inflated to the high pressure of 330 to 350 psi (23 to 24 bars, 2,300 to 2,400 kilopascals). On landing the NO. 1 engine was usually shut down when taxiing to save brake wear, as keeping both engines running at idle power was still sufficient to propel the Lightning to 80 mph if brakes were not used. Dunlop Maxarit anti-skid brakes were fitted. The Lightning featured a conformal ventral store to house either a fuel tank or a rocket engine. 
The rocket engine, a Napier double scorpion motor, also contained a reserve of 200 imp gal L of high test peroxide (HTP) to drive the rocket's turbopump and act as an oxidizer. Fuel would have been drawn from the aircraft internal tankage. The rocket engine was intended at an early stage in the Lightning's development to boost performance should non-afterburning reheated engines be fitted. The subsequent basic performance with reheated Avons was deemed sufficient, and the rocket engine option was cancelled in 1958. The ventral store was routinely used as an extra fuel tank, holding 247 imp gal L of usable fuel. On later variants of the Lightning, a ventral weapons pack could be installed to equip the aircraft alternatively with different armaments, including missiles, rockets, and cannons. <laughs> <laughs> Avionics and systems Early versions of the Lightning were equipped with the Ferranti developed AI.23 monopulse radar, which was contained right at the front of the fuselage within an inlet cone at the center of the engine intake. Radar information was displayed on an early head up display and managed by onboard computers. The AI.23, an immediate predecessor of the AI.24 Foxhunter, supported several operational modes, which included autonomous search, automatic target tracking, and ranging for all weapons. The pilot attack site provided gyroscopically derived lead angle and backup stadiometric ranging for gun firing. The radar and gun sight were collectively designated the AirPass, Airborne Interception Radar, and Pilot Attack Site System. The radar would be successively upgraded with the introduction of more capable Lightning variants, such as to provide guidance for the Red Top missile. The cockpit of the Lightning was designed to meet the RAF's OR 946 specification for tactical air navigation technology, and thus featured an integrated flight instrument display arrangement, an Elliott Bros London Limited Autopilot, a master reference gyroscopic reader, an auto attack system, and an instrument landing system. Despite initial skepticism of the aircraft's centralized detection and warning system, the system proved its merits during the development program and was subsequently redeveloped for greater reliability. Communications included UHF and VHF radios and a datalink. Unlike the previous generation of aircraft which used gaseous oxygen for life support, the Lightning would employ liquid oxygen-based apparatus for the pilot. Cockpit pressurization and conditioning would be maintained through tappings from the engine compressors. Electricity was provided via a bleed air-driven turbine housed in the rear fuselage, which drove an AC alternator and DC generator. This approach was unusual, since most aircraft used driveshaft-driven generators, alternators for electrical energy. A 28 volts DC battery provided emergency backup power. Aviation author Kev Darling stated of the Lightning, "...never before had a fighter been so dependent upon electronics." Each engine was equipped with a pair of hydraulic pumps, one of which powered the flight control systems and the other power for the undercarriage, flaps, and air brakes. Switchable hydraulic circuits were used for redundancy in the event of a leak or other failure. A combination of Dunlop Maxarit anti-skid brakes on the main wheels and an Irvin air chute braking parachute slowed the aircraft during landing. A tail hook was also fitted. Accumulators on the wheel brakes performed as backups to the hydraulics, providing minimal braking. Above a certain airspeed a stop, engine would windmill, that is, continue to be rotated by air flowing through it in a similar manner to a ram air turbine, sufficient to generate adequate hydraulic power for the powered controls during flight. Towards the end of its service, the Lightning was increasingly outclassed by newer fighters, mainly due to avionics and armament obsolescence. The radar had a limited range and no track while scanning capability, and it could detect targets only in a narrow 40 degrees arc. While an automatic collision course attack system was developed and successfully demonstrated by English Electric, it was not adopted due to cost concerns. 
Plans were mooted to supplement or replace the obsolete Red Top and Firestreak missiles with modern AIM-9L Sidewinder missiles to help rectify some of the obsolescence, but these ambitions were not realized due to lack of funding. An alternative to the modernization of existing aircraft would have been the development of more advanced variants. A proposed variable sweep wing lightning would have likely involved the adoption of a new power plant and radar and was believed by BAC to significantly increase performance, but ultimately was not pursued. Topic: <laughs> Climb performance. Lightning was designed less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 as an interceptor fighter. As such, it has probably the fastest rate of climb of any combat aircraft. Flight International, the 21st of March 1968. The Lightning possessed a remarkable climb rate. It was famous for its ability to rapidly rotate from takeoff to climb almost vertically from the runway, though this did not yield the best time to altitude. The Lightning's trademark tail stand maneuver exchanged airspeed for altitude, it could slow to near stall speeds before commencing level flight. The Lightning's optimum climb profile required the use of afterburners during takeoff. Immediately after takeoff, the nose would be lowered for rapid acceleration to 430 knots 800 km per hour IAS before initiating a climb, stabilizing at 450 knots 830 km per hour. This would yield a constant climb rate of approximately 20,000 feet per minute 100 meters per second. Around 13,000 feet 4, meters, the lightning would reach Mach 0.87 and maintain this speed until reaching the tropopause, 36,000 feet 11, meters, on a standard day. If climbing further, pilots would accelerate to supersonic speed at the tropopause before resuming the climb. A lightning flying at optimum climb profile would reach 36,000 feet meters in under three minutes. The official ceiling of the lightning was kept secret. Low security RAF documents often stated in excess of 60,000 feet meters. In September 1962, Fighter Command organized interception trials on Lockheed U-2 as at heights of around 60,000 to 65,000 feet (18,000 to 20,000 meters), which were temporarily based at RAF Upper Hayford to monitor Soviet nuclear tests. Climb techniques and flight profiles were developed to put the Lightning into a suitable attack position. To avoid risking the U-2, the Lightning was not permitted any closer than 5,000 feet 1, meters and could not fly in front of the U-2. For the intercepts, four Lightning fluorine mono-arsenide conducted 18 solo sorties. The sorties proved that, under GCI, successful intercepts could be made at up to 65,000 feet 20, meters. Due to sensitivity, details of these flights were deliberately avoided in the pilot log books. In 1984, during a NATO exercise, FLTLT Mike Hale intercepted a U 2 at a height which they had previously considered safe, thought to be 66,000 feet. 20, meters. Records show that Hale also climbed to 88,000 feet meters in his Lightning F.3 XR 749. This was not sustained level flight but a ballistic climb, in which the pilot takes the aircraft to top speed and then puts the aircraft into a climb, exchanging speed for altitude. Hale also participated in time-to-height and acceleration trials against Lockheed F-104 starfighters from Aalborg. He reports that the Lightnings won all races easily with the exception of the low-level supersonic acceleration, which was a dead heat. Lightning pilot and chief examiner Brian Carroll reported taking a Lightning F.53 up to 87,300 feet meters over Saudi Arabia at which level, "...earth curvature was visible and the sky was quite dark," noting that control-wise, "...it was on a knife edge." 
Brian Carroll compared the Lightning and the F-15C Eagle, having flown both aircraft, stating that, "...acceleration in both was impressive, you have all seen the Lightning leap away once brakes are released, the Eagle was almost as good, and climb speed was rapidly achieved." Takeoff roll is between 2,000 and 3,000 feet, 610 and 910 meters, depending upon military or maximum afterburner powered takeoff. The Lightning was quicker off the ground, reaching 50 feet, 15 meters height in a horizontal distance of 1,630 feet, 500 meters. Chief test pilot for the Lightning Roland Beaumont, who also flew most of the Century Series U.S. aircraft, stated his opinion that nothing at that time had the inherent stability, control and docile handling characteristics of the Lightning throughout the full flight envelope. The turn performance and buffet boundaries of the Lightning were well in advance of anything known to him. Topic. Aircraft performance Early Lightning models, the F.1, F1A, and F.2, had a rated top speed of Mach 1.7 at 36,000 feet in an ICAO standard atmosphere, and 650 knots IAS at lower altitudes. Later models, the F-2A, F.3, F-3A, F.6, and F.53, had a rated top speed of Mach 2.0 2136 km per hour at 36,000 feet 11,000 meters, and speeds up to 700 knots 1,300 km per hour, indicated air speed for operational necessity only. A Lightning fitted with Avon 200 series engines, a ventral tank and two Firestreak missiles typically ran out of excess thrust at Mach 1.9 on a standard day, while a Lightning powered by the Avon 300 series engines, a ventral tank and two Red Top missiles ran out of excess thrust at Mach 2.0. Directional stability decreased as speed increased, there were potentially hazardous consequences in the form of vertical fin failure if yaw was not correctly counteracted by rudder use. Imposed Mach limits during missile launches protected stability. Later Lightning variants had a larger vertical fin, giving a greater stability margin at high speed. Supersonic speeds also threatened inlet stability. The inlet's central shock cone served as a compression surface, diverting air into the annular inlet. As the lightning accelerated through Mach 1, the shock cone generated an oblique shock positioned forward of the intake lip. Known as a subcritical inlet condition, this was stable, but produced inefficient spillage drag. Around the design Mach speed, the oblique shock was positioned just forward of the inlet lip and efficiently compressed the air without spillage. When traveling beyond the design Mach, the oblique shock would become supercritical, and supersonic airflow would enter the inlet duct, which could only handle subsonic air. In this condition, the engine generated drastically less thrust and may result in surges or compressor stalls, these could cause flameouts or damage. Thermal and structural limits were also present. Air is heated considerably when compressed by the passage of an aircraft at supersonic speeds. The airframe absorbs heat from the surrounding air, the inlet shock cone at the front of the aircraft becoming the hottest part. The shock cone was composed of fiberglass, necessary because the shock cone also served as a radar radome. A metal shock cone would interfere with the AI-23's radar emissions. The shock cone would be eventually weakened due to the fatigue caused by the thermal cycles involved in regularly performing high-speed flights. 
at 36,000 feet (11,000 meters) and Mach 1.7 (1,815 kilometers per hour), the heating conditions on the shock cone would be similar to those at sea level and 650 knots (1,200 kilometers per hour) indicated airspeed. But if the speed was increased to Mach 2.0 (2,136 kilometers per hour) at 36,000 feet (11,000 meters), the shock cone would be exposed to higher temperatures than those at Mach 1.7. The shock cone was strengthened on the later Lightning F2A, F.3, F.6, and F.53 models, thus allowing routine operations at up to Mach 2.0. The small fin variants could exceed Mach 1.7, but the stability limits and shock cone thermal, strength limits made such speeds risky. The large fin variants, especially those equipped with Avon 300 series engines could safely reach Mach 2, and given the right atmospheric conditions, might even achieve a few more tenths of a Mach. All Lightning variants had the excess thrust to slightly exceed 700 knots 1,300 km per hour indicated airspeed under certain conditions, and the service limit of 650 knots 1,200 km per hour was occasionally ignored. With the strengthened shock cone, the Lightning could safely approach its thrust limit, but fuel consumption at very high airspeeds was excessive and became a major limiting factor. Topic. Handling characteristics The Lightning was fully aerobatic and was capable of rates of roll far in excess of that which could be normally tolerated by a pilot. Topic. Operational history Topic. Royal Air Force The first aircraft to enter service with the RAF, three pre-production P.1Bs, arrived at RAF Koltishal in Norfolk on 23 December 1959, joining the Air Fighting Development Squadron of the Central Fighter Establishment, where they were used to clear the Lightning for entry into service. The production Lightning F.1 entered service with the AFDS in May 1960, allowing the unit to take part in the air defense exercise, Yeoman, later that month. The Lightning F.1 entered frontline squadron service with 74 Squadron under the command of squadron leader John Johnny Howe at Coltishall from the 11th of July 1960. The aircraft's radar and missiles proved to be effective and pilots reported that the Lightning was easy to fly. However, in the first few months of operation the aircraft's serviceability was extremely poor. This was due to the complexity of the aircraft systems and shortages of spares and ground support equipment. Even when the Lightning was not grounded by technical faults, the RAF initially struggled to get more than 20 flying hours per aircraft per month compared with the 40 flying hours that English Electric believed could be achieved with proper support. In spite of these concerns, within six months of the Lightning entering service, 74 Squadron was able to achieve 100 flying hours per aircraft. In addition to its training and operational roles, 74 Squadron was appointed as the official Fighter Command Aerobatic Team for 1961, flying at air shows throughout the United Kingdom and Europe. Deliveries of the slightly improved Lightning F-1A, with improved avionics and provision for an air-to-air -air refueling probe, allowed two more squadrons, 56 and 111 Squadron, both based at RAF Wadisham to convert to the Lightning in 1960–1961. The Lightning F.1 would only be ordered in limited numbers and serve for a short time, nonetheless, it was viewed as a significant step forwards in Britain's air defence capabilities. Following their replacement from frontline duties by the introduction of successively improved variants of the Lightning, the remaining F.1 aircraft were employed by the Lightning Conversion Squadron. 
An improved variant, the F.2 first flew on the 11th of July 1961 and entered service with 19 Squadron at the end of 1962 and 92 Squadron in early 1963. Conversion of these two squadrons was aided by the use of the two-seat T.4 trainer, which entered service with the Lightning Conversion Squadron, later renamed 226 Operational Conversion Unit in June 1962. While the OCU was the major user of the two-seater, small numbers were also allocated to the frontline fighter squadrons. More F-2s were produced than there were available squadron slots so later production aircraft were stored for years before being used operationally. Some Lightning F-2s were converted to F.2As. They had some of the improvements added to the F.6, the F.3, with more powerful engines and the new red top missile but no cannon was expected to be the definitive lightning, and at one time it was planned to equip ten squadrons, with the remaining two squadrons retaining the F.2. On 16 June 1962, the F.3 flew for the first time. It had a short operational life and was withdrawn from service early due to defense cutbacks and the introduction of the F.6, some of which were converted F3s. The Lightning F.6 was a more capable and longer range version of the F.3. It initially had no cannon, but installable gun packs were made available later. A few F3s were upgraded to F6s. Author Kev Darling suggests that decreasing British overseas defence commitments had led to those aircraft instead being prematurely withdrawn. The introduction of the F.3 and F.6 allowed the RAF to progressively requip squadrons operating aircraft such as the Gloucester Javelin and retire these types during the mid-1960s. A Lightning was tasked with shooting down a pilot Les Harrier over West Germany in 1972. The pilot had abandoned the Harrier which continued flying towards the East German border. It was shot down to avoid a diplomatic incident. During British Airways trials in April 1985, Concorde was offered as a target to NATO fighters including F-15 Eagles, F-16 Fighting Falcons, F-14 Tomcats, Mirages, and F-104 Starfighters, but only Lightning XR-749, flown by Mike Hale and described by him as, "...a very hot ship, even for a Lightning." managed to overtake Concorde on a stern conversion intercept. During the 1960s, as strategic awareness increased and a multitude of alternative fighter designs were developed by Warsaw Pact and NATO members, the Lightning's range and firepower shortcomings became increasingly apparent. The transfer of McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom IIs from Royal Navy service enabled these much longer-ranged aircraft to be added to the RAF's interceptor force alongside those withdrawn from Germany as they were replaced by SEPECAT Jaguars in the ground attack role. The Lightning's direct replacement was the Tornado F-3s, an interceptor variant of the Panavia Tornado. The Tornado featured several advantages over the Lightning, including a far larger weapons load and considerably more advanced avionics. Lightnings were slowly phased out of service between 1974 and 1988. In their final years the airframes required considerable maintenance to keep them airworthy due to the sheer number of accumulated flight hours. Fighter Command, Strike Command the main lightning role was the air defence of the United Kingdom and was operated at first as part of Fighter Command and then from 1968 with No. 11 Group of Strike Command. At the formation of Strike Command nine lightning squadrons were operational in the United Kingdom, Far East Air Force, in 1967 No. 74 Squadron was moved to RAF Tenga, Singapore to take over the air defence role from the Gloucester Javelin-equipped 60 Squadron. The squadron was disbanded in 1971 following the withdrawal of British forces from Singapore, near East Air Force. The Royal Air Force had detached lightnings to RAF Akrotiri, Cyprus to support the Near East Air Force and in 1967 no. 
56 Squadron RAF moved from RAF Wadisham with the Lightning F.3 to provide a permanent air defense force. It converted to the F.6 in 1971 and returned to the United Kingdom in 1975. Royal Air Force Germany. In the early 1960s, No. 19 Squadron and No. 92 Squadron with Lightning F-2s, moved from RAF Le Confield to RAF Gutersloh in West Germany as part of Royal Air Force Germany and operated in the low-level air defense role until disbanded in 1977 when the role was taken over by the Phantom FGR-2. Saudi Arabia and Kuwait On 21 December 1965, Saudi Arabia, keen to improve its air defences owing to the Saudi involvement in the North Yemen civil war and the resultant air incursions into Saudi airspace by Egyptian forces supporting the Yemeni Republicans, placed a series of orders with Britain and the US to build a new integrated air defence system. BAC received orders for 34 multirole single-seat Lightning F-53s that could still retain very high performance and reasonable endurance, and six two-seat T.55 trainers, together with 25 BAC Strikemaster trainers, while the contract also included new radar systems, American Hawk surface-to-air missiles and training and support services, to provide an urgent counter-to-air incursions, with Saudi towns near the border being being bombed by Egyptian aircraft, an additional interim contract, called Magic Carpet, was placed in March 1966 for the supply of six X RAF Lightnings, four F 2s, and two T.4 trainers, redesignated F.52 and T.54, respectively, six Hawker Hunters, two air defense radars, and a number of Thunderbird surface to air missiles. The Magic Carpet Lightnings were delivered to Saudi Arabia in July 1966. One lost in an accident was later replaced May 1967. The Lightnings and Hunters, flown by mercenary pilots, were deployed to Kamas Mushait airfield near the Yemeni border, resulting in the curtailing of operations by the Egyptian Air Force over the Yemeni-Saudi border. Kuwait ordered 14 Lightnings in December 1966, comprising 12 F.53 kS and 2 T.55 kS. The first Kuwait aircraft, a T-55K first flew on 24 May 1968 and deliveries to Kuwait started in December 1968. The Kuwaitis somewhat overestimated their ability to maintain such a complex aircraft, not adopting the extensive support from BAC and airwork services that the Saudis used to keep their lightnings operational, so serviceability was poor. Saudi Arabia officially received F.53 Lightnings in December 1967, although they were kept at Wharton while trials and development continued and the first Saudi Lightnings to leave Wharton were four T-55s delivered in early 1968 to the Royal Air Force 226 Operational Conversion Unit at RAF Koltishal. The four T-55s were used to train Saudi aircrew for the next 18 months. The new build lightnings were delivered under Operation Magic Palm between July 1968 and August 1969. Two lightnings, AF.53 and AT.55, were destroyed in accidents prior to delivery, and were replaced by two additional aircraft, the last of which was delivered in June 1972. The multirole F-53s served in the ground attack and reconnaissance roles as well as an air defense fighter, with lightnings of No. 6 Squadron RSAF carrying out ground attack missions using rockets and bombs during a border dispute with South Yemen between December 1969 and May 1970. One F.53 was shot down by Yemeni ground fire on 3 May 1970 during a reconnaissance mission, with the pilot ejecting successfully and being rescued by Saudi forces. 
Saudi Arabia received Northrop F-5E fighters from 1971, which resulted in the Lightning's relinquishing the ground attack mission, concentrating on air defense, and to a lesser extent, reconnaissance. Kuwait's Lightnings did not have a long service career. After an unsuccessful attempt by the regime to sell them to Egypt in 1973, they were replaced its last lightnings with Dassault Mirage F-1s in 1977. The remaining aircraft were stored at Kuwait International Airport, many were subsequently destroyed during the invasion of Kuwait by Iraq August 1990. Until 1982, Saudi Arabia's Lightnings were mainly operated by 2 and 6 Squadron RSAF although a few were also used by 13 Squadron RSAF, but when 6 Squadron re-equipped with the F-15 Eagle then all the remaining aircraft were operated by 2 Squadron at Tabuk. In 1985 as part of the agreement to sell the Panavia Tornado to the RSAF, the 22 flyable Lightnings were traded into British Aerospace and returned to Wharton in January 1986. While Bay offered the ex-Saudi Lightnings to Austria and Nigeria, no sales were made, and the aircraft were eventually disposed of to museums. Variants English Electric P-1A Single-seat supersonic research aircraft, two prototypes built and one static test airframe, English Electric P-1B Single-seat operational prototypes to meet specification F-2349, three prototypes built, further 20 development aircraft ordered in February 1954. Type was officially named Lightning in October 1958, Lightning F.1. Development batch aircraft, single seat fighters delivered from 1959, a total of 19 built and one static test airframe. Nose mounted twin 30mm Aden cannon, two Firestreak missiles, VHF radio, and Ferranti AI 23 air pass radar, Lightning F1A. Single seat fighter, delivered in 1961. Featured Avon 210R engines, an in flight refueling probe, and UHF radio, a total of 28 built, Lightning F.2. Single seat fighter, an improved variant of the F.1, delivered in 1962. A total of 44 built with 31 later modified to F-2A standard, 5 later modified to F.52 for export to Saudi Arabia, Lightning F-2A Single seat fighter F-2s upgraded to near F.6 standard, featuring Avon 211R engines, retained Aden cannon and Firestreak replaceable Firestreak pack swappable with Aden cannon pack for a total of four Aden cannon, arrestor hook and enlarged ventral tank for two hours flight endurance. A total of 31 converted from F.2, Lightning F.3. Single seat fighter with upgraded AI-23B radar, Avon 301R engines, new red top missiles, enlarged and clipped tail fin due to aerodynamics of carriage of red top, and deletion of Aden cannon. A total of 70 built at least 9 were converted to F.6 standard, Lightning F-3A, Single seat fighter with extended range of 800 miles due to large ventral tank and new cambered wings. A total of 16 built, known also as an F.3 interim version or F.6 interim version, 15 later modified to F.6 standard, Lightning T.4 Two-seat side-by-side training version, based on the F-1A, two prototypes and 20 production built, two aircraft later converted to T.5 prototypes, two aircraft later converted to T.54, Lightning T.5 Two-seat side-by-side training version, based on the F.3, 22 production aircraft built. One former RAF aircraft later converted to T.55 for Saudi Arabia, Lightning F.6. Single-seat fighter an improved longer-range variant of the F.3. 
It featured new wings with better efficiency and subsonic performance, overwing fuel tanks and a larger ventral fuel tank, reintroduction of 30 mm cannon initially no cannon but later in the forward part of the ventral pack rather than in the nose, use of red top missiles. A total of 39 built also 9 converted from F.3 and 15 from F.3A, Lightning F.7, Proposed single-seat interceptor featuring variable geometry wings, extended fuselage, relocated undercarriage, underwing hardpoints, cheek-mounted intakes, new radar and use of the Sparrow, Skyflash AAMs. Never built, Lightning F.52 Slightly modified XRAF F.2 single-seat fighters for export to Saudi Arabia 5 converted, Lightning F.53 Export version of the F.6 with pylons for bombs or unguided rocket pods, 44 times 2 in 50 mm, total of 46 built and 1 converted from F.6 12 F.5 3 kS for the Kuwaiti Air Force, 34 F-53s for the Royal Saudi Arabian Air Force, one aircraft crashed before delivery, Lightning T.54, XRAF T.42 seat trainers supplied to Saudi Arabia, two converted, Lightning T.55. Two seat side by side training aircraft, export version of the T.5, eight built, six T-55s for the Royal Saudi Arabian Air Force, two T.55 kilos for the Kuwaiti Air Force, and one converted from T.5 that crashed before delivery. See Lightning V.1. Proposed two-seat Royal Navy Fleet Air Arm Carrier capable variant with variable geometry wing, not built. Operators Military operators Kuwait Kuwait Air Force operated both the F-53K single-seat fighter and the T-55K training version from 1968 to 1977. Saudi Arabia Royal Saudi Air Force operated the Lightning from 1967 to 1986. Two squadron operated the F.53 and T.55. Six Squadron operated the F.52 and F.53. Thirteen Squadron operated the F.52, F.53, and T.55. RSAF Lightning Conversion Unit United Kingdom Royal Air Force operated the Lightning from 1959 to 1988. RAF Aerial Display Teams the Tigers of No. 74 Squadron. Led RAF Aerial Display Team from 1962 and first display team with Mach 2 aircraft. The Firebirds of No. 56 Squadron from 1963 in red and silver. RAF Squadrons Five Squadron formed at RAF Binbrook on 8 October 1965, operating the Lightning F.6 and T.5. A few F-1s, F.1s and F-3s were used as targets and later for air display use from 1971. The squadron remained operational at Binbrook with the Lightning F.6 until 1987, disbanding on 31 December. 11 Squadron formed at RAF Lukers in April 1967 with the Lightning F.6. It moved to RAF Binbrook in March 1972, receiving a few F-3s for target duties. It remained operational until 1988, disbanding on 30 April 1988. 19 Squadron operated the F.2 and the F-2A 23 Squadron operated the F.3 and the F.6 29 Squadron operated the F.3 
56 Squadron operated the F.1, F1A, F.3 and the F.6 65 Squadron operated as No. 226 OCU with the F.1, F1A and the F.3 74 Squadron operated the F.1, F.3 and the F.6 92 Squadron operated the F.2 and the F2A 1963 111 Squadron operated the F1A, F.3 and the F.6 145 Squadron operated as No. 226 OCU with the F.1, F1A and the F.3 226 Operational Conversion Unit operated the F1A, F.3, T.4 and the T.5 Air Fighting Development Squadron Lightning Conversion Squadron 1960 to 1963 RAF flights Binbrook Target Facilities Flight 1966 to 1973 Lukers Target Facilities Flight 1966 to 1973 Wadisham Target Facilities Flight 1966 to 1973 Lightning Training Flight 1975 to 1987 RAF stations RAF Akrotiri RAF Binbrook RAF Koltishal RAF Geilenkirchen RAF Gutersloh RAF Le Confield RAF Middleton Street George RAF Lukers RAF Tenga RAF Wadisham Topic: Civil operators. South Africa Thunder City, a private company based at Cape Town International Airport, South Africa, operated one Lightning T.5 and two single-seat F.6s. The T.5XS452, civil registration ZOO BBD flew again on 14 January 2014 after restoration and is currently the only airworthy example, a Lightning T.5XS451 civil registration ZOO BEX, belonging to Thunder City crashed after developing mechanical problems during its display at the biennial South African Air Force Overberg Airshow held at AFB Overberg near Bredosdorp on 14 November 2009. The Silver Falcons, the South African Air Force's official aerobatic team, flew a missing man formation after it was announced that the pilot had died in the crash. United Kingdom British Aerospace operated four X-RAF F6s as radar targets to aid development of the Panavia Tornado ADV's AI.24 Foxhunter radar from 1988 to 1992. United States The Anglo-American Lightning Organization, a group based at Stennis Airport, Kiln, Mississippi, is returning E-Lightning T.5, XS422 to airworthy status. As of November 2013 the aircraft was capable of running its engines. The aircraft was formerly with the Empire Test Pilots School at Boscombe Down in Wiltshire, UK. Topic. Surviving aircraft Topic. Cyprus On Displakes 929 Lightning F.6 at RAF Akrotiri, Cyprus Topic. France On display M178 Lightning F1A at Savigny Les Bones. Topic: Germany. 
on display 730 Lightning F2A at the Luftwaffe Museum, Gatto, Germany. XN782 Lightning F2A at the Flugasellung Hermeskel, Germany. Topic: <laughs> Kuwait. On display 53 to 418 Lightning F.53 at the Kuwait Science and Natural History Museum, Kuwait City. Lightning F.53 at the Abdullah Al Mubarak Air Base. Three Lightnings on stands at Al Jaber Air Base. Topic: Netherlands. On display 784 Lightning F2A at Barlow. Topic. Saudi Arabia On display 770 Lightning F.52 at the Royal Saudi Air Force Museum, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. XM989 Lightning T.54 at the main entrance to King Abdul Aziz Air Base, Dharan, Saudi Arabia. 55 to 716 Lightning T.55 at the Royal Saudi Air Force Museum, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. The following are on display but with no public access. XG313 Lightning F.1 at the VIP terminal on King Abdulaziz Air Base Dharan, Saudi Arabia. XN-767 Lightning F.52 Pylon mounted at the Aeromedical Center on King Abdulaziz Air Base Dharan, Saudi Arabia. Unidentified Lightning at entrance to Taif Heart Mall in downtown Taif, Saudi Arabia. 224. Lightning Mark F.53 on display at Royal Saudi Air Force, King Khalid Air Base in Qamas Mushet, Saudi Arabia. GPS 18.260764, 42.795216 Unidentified lightning mounted in a static display on the Royal Saudi Air Force, King Khalid Airbase in Qamas Mushet, Saudi Arabia. GPS 18.272086, 42. 805935 Topic: South Africa. Airworthy Zoo BBD, former XS452 Lightning T.5, based at Cape Town, stored or under restoration Zoo BEW, former XR773 Lightning F.6, stored in Cape Town. Zoo Bay, former XP693 Lightning F.6, stored in Cape Town. Topic United Kingdom on display WG760, the first prototype P1A at the RAF Museum Cosford, England. WG763, the second prototype P1A at the Museum of Science and Industry, Manchester, England. XG329 P1B, Lightning F.1 pre-production aircraft at the Norfolk and Suffolk Aviation Museum, Flixton, England. XG337 P1B, Lightning F.1 pre-production aircraft at the RAF Museum Cosford. XM135 Lightning F1A at the Imperial War Museum Duxford, England. XM192 Lightning F1A at Tattershall Thorpe, Lincolnshire, England. XN776 Lightning F2A at the National Museum of Flight, East Fortune, Scotland. XP706 Lightning F.3 at Aeroventure, Doncaster, England. XR713 Lightning F.3 with LPG, Bruntingthorpe Aerodrome, Leicestershire, England. XR728 Lightning F.6 with LPG, Bruntingthorpe Aerodrome, Leicestershire, England Taxi Able. XR749 Lightning F.3 Outside Score Group's Integrated Valve and Gas Turbine Plant, Peterhead, Scotland. 
XR753 Lightning F.3 at RAF Coningsby, Lincolnshire. XR770 Lightning F.6 RAF Manston History Museum, Manston, Kent XR771 Lightning F.6 at the Midland Air Museum, Coventry, England. XS-417 Lightning T.5 at the Newark Air Museum, Newark, England. XS-420 Lightning T.5 on loan to the Farnborough Air Sciences Trust, Farnborough, England. XS-456 Lightning T.5 at the Skegness Water Leisure Park, Lincolnshire. XS-458 Lightning T.5 at Cranfield Airport, Bedfordshire, England. Taxi Able. XS-459 Lightning T.5 at the Fenland and West Norfolk Aviation Museum, Wisbeck, England, XS-897 Lightning F.6 painted as F.3 XP-765 at RAF Coningsby, Lincolnshire. XS-903 Lightning F.6 at the Yorkshire Air Museum, Elvington, England. XS-904 Lightning F.6 with LPG, Bruntingthorpe Aerodrome, Leicestershire, England, Taxi Able. XS-925 Lightning F.6 stand mounted at Castle Motors on the A38 near Laskeard, Cornwall, England, XS-928 Lightning F.6 at Wharton Aerodrome, Lancashire, XS-936 Lightning F.6 at the Royal Air Force Museum London, England. ZF-578 Lightning F.53 as XR-753 at the Tangmere Military Aviation Museum, Tangmere, England. ZF-579 Lightning F.53 at the Gatwick Aviation Museum, Charlwood, near Gatwick Airport, England, ZF-580 Lightning F.53 outside base systems, Samlesbury, England. ZF-583 Lightning F.53 at the Solway Aviation Museum, Carlisle Airport Cumbria England. ZF-584 Lightning F.53 at the Dumfries and Galloway Aviation Museum, Dumfries, Scotland. ZF-588 Lightning F.53 on static display at East Midlands Aeropark Leicestershire ZF-592 Lightning F.53 as 53-686 at the City of Norwich Aviation Museum, Norwich, England. ZF-594 Lightning F.53 painted as XS-733 at the North East Aircraft Museum, Sunderland, England. ZF-598 Lightning T.55 as 55-713 at the Midland Air Museum, Coventry, England. XL629 Lightning T.4 inside the main gate at Maud Boscombe Down, Wiltshire, England, stored or under restoration SHA 847 P1B stored dismantled in Suffolk, England XM172 Lightning F1A in a private collection at Spark Bridge, Cumbria. XM173 Lightning F1A at the Dyson Research Center, Malmesbury, Wiltshire XP745 Lightning F.3 stored in Greenfield, London. XR724 Lightning F.6 in a private collection at the former RAF Binbrook, Lincolnshire, XS416 Lightning T.5 in a private collection at New York, Lincolnshire. XR-725 Lightning F.6 in a private collection at Binbrook, Lincolnshire. ZF-581 Lightning F.53 under restoration at the Bentwaters Cold War Museum, Suffolk, England. Topic United States on displays 593 Lightning F.53 painted in five squadron camouflage colors, on display at Pima Air and Space Museum in Tucson, Arizona, stored or under restoration 422 XS Lighting T.5 painted as XS 422 of the Royal Air Force, under restoration to fly at Stennis Airport, Mississippi. Topic Specifications Lightning F.6 
data from pilot's notes and operating data manual for Lightning F.6 unless otherwise noted general characteristics crew 1 length 55 feet 3 in 16.8 meters wingspan 34 feet 10 in 10.6 meters height 19 feet 7 in 5.97 meters wing area 474.5 feet squared 44.08 square meters empty weight 31068 pounds 14092 kilograms max takeoff weight 45750 pounds 20752 kilograms Power plant, 2 times Rolls Royce Avon 301R afterburning turbojets. Dry thrust, 12,530 lbf, 55.74 kN each. Thrust with afterburner, 16,000 lbf, 71.17 kN each performance. Maximum speed Mach 2.0 1300 miles per hour 2100 kilometers per hour at 36000 feet 700 kias at lower altitude range 850 miles 1370 kilometers supersonic intercept radius 155 miles 250 kilometers Ferry range 920 miles 800 Nm 1660 kilometers 1270 miles 1100 Nm 2040 kilometers with ferry tanks Service ceiling 54000 feet 16000 meters zoom ceiling greater than 70000 feet Rate of climb 20000 feet per minute 100 meters per second Wing loading: 76 pounds per foot squared, 370 kilograms per square meter. Thrust weight: 0.78 armament. Guns: 2 times 30 millimeters, 1. 18 in Aden cannon. Hardpoints: 2 times under fuselage for mounting air-to-air -air missiles. 2 times over wing pylon stations for 260 gallons ferry tanks and provisions to carry combinations of. Missiles: two De Havilland Firestreak or two times Hawker Siddeley Red Top. Topic: Notable appearances. British journalist and TV presenter Jeremy Clarkson borrowed a Lightning serial XM172, which was temporarily placed in his garden and documented on Clarkson's TV show Speed. Professor Brian Cox used a South African Lightning XS451 in an episode of the BBC TV programme Wonders of the Solar System. The Lightning climbed to a very high altitude, allowing the professor to show the curvature of the Earth and the relative dimensions of the atmosphere. This aircraft crashed a month later at the Overberg Airshow after developing mechanical problems. Topic. See also Related development Short SB. 5 aircraft of comparable role, configuration and era. Convair F-102 Delta Dagger Convair F-106 Delta Dart Dassault Mirage 3 Lockheed F-104 Starfighter Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-21 Suhoi Su-15 Related lists List of accidents and incidents involving the English Electric Lightning List of aircraft of the Royal Air Force List of fighter aircraft <laughs>